Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a Saturday late afternoon early evening episode of Ted's Booze Cellar with me, Ted. It is currently 5.32 on the 27th of June 2020. I hope you are all doing well today and that you are in a good state of physical, mental and financial well-being and if you aren't, I hope it gets better for you very, very soon. So, on to today's beer of choice, or drink of choice, or drink of subject, or whatever. Now, you guys will remember from last weekend that we reviewed Paulana Munchener Hell by Paulana Munchen. And this was a very interesting little sort of Munich, kind of bordering on Oktoberfesty sort of beer that had like this interesting like sweet undertone. And today we're taking a look at another beer from Paulana Munchen. Today we are taking a look at Paulana Weissbier. Now, as you guys may remember, we reviewed, obviously, different varieties of Erdinger on this channel before, namely Erdinger Weissbier. So this is another Weissbier, but this time it's from Paulana Munchen instead of Erdinger. So I'm interested in trying this. It just says Munich Wheat Beer. So I assume that's, I assume that's what Weissbier stands for. It is 5.5% alcohol volume, so... It's just slightly a bit above average of the general average strength of beers here in the UK. I think it's probably about average for what you'd probably roughly get in the, in Germany as well. So it doesn't really obviously say much that I can understand on the back of the can considering it's in German. But yeah, no, it's got quite a nice, interesting little art design on the can. I quite like the um, I quite like the colour and mix of colours on the can. It kind of reminds me of the bottle of Erdinger Weissbier and I like the beige mixed in with the Munich scenery and like people having big Paulina glasses just chopped up full of beer during you know summer or autumn time I'm guessing but yeah no very nice scenery very nice colours. I'll give it a 10 out of 10 for the design of the can and the display of it and yeah it doesn't, again, yeah, I can't really see much to say about the can or the drink in terms of writing, so we'll just go on into giving it a good sniff and see if it can give us as good a first impression as Munchner Hell. So unfortunately, I think this did get a bit shaken up, but hopefully it's still in good, fairly good condition. Foam tastes all right. Foam taste has that weird sort of just general beer taste that you can never quite put your finger on. But let's give it a sniff first and see what it, give it, you know give ourselves a good first impression. Hopefully, oh wow, yeah, it definitely has a stronger smell than the Munchner Hell, and it has more of that German wheat beer s smell to it. And there's again like a little bit of like sweetness undertone to the smell underlying. Just a very strong, general German wheat beer smell. So, I'll give the smell like a, a out of ten. Like I do feel like you probably can sniff it consistently all the time, but it's a nice enough beer that you can sort of have it like there and just chill out with it, like in a German park or something, while eating currywurst or something like that. So yeah, eight out of ten for the smell. It smells nice. It smells nice. It's. I can imagine that some people might not find the smell too palatable, but I find it pretty pleasant actually. So, as always, we'll start off with a quick palate cleanser of water before we actually taste it. And yes, I am having a German wheat beer in a glass designed for a Portuguese cerveza beer. So, yeah, uh, crucify me in the comments if you so wish to do so. But, Yes, considering that this glass has only had water in it, we'll just have the beer in here. So it's got this interesting sort of rosy, ambery sort of colour. Kind of a bit more cloudy, I think, than the Munchner Hell that we reviewed last weekend. Uh, screwed up on the head a little bit there, but it'll go down in a minute. So, yeah, it got quite an interesting colour. It kind of looks actually like the Sidra Fermia that I reviewed several months ago. So, weirdly enough, I think it's got the same colour as that. So, well, anyway, time to taste it and see what it's actually like. So, bottoms up. Mm. 
ừ. See, what's quite interesting is it's got all the characteristics you'd expect of a German Munich wheat beer. But then it's got some weird sort of hazy sweet undertones and other aspects that you'd expect from something like a, a Belgian Blonde Ale, weirdly enough. Something like Hogarden or Leffe, you know, one of the really hazy ones. And then, and then there is a sort of like that underlying sweetness that you'd expect in something like Erdinger Weiss beer. So, it's an interesting mix of like a Munchen Hell, a Munchen Weiss beer, and then like Belgian hazy wheat like blonde ales. So, it's it's a weird mix of flavors, but they all mix together quite well. And oh dear me, yeah, it definitely feels like a like a, a rich flavored beer, but not one that sort of has too much of a rich rich texture or rich flavour that it overpowers your senses. Like, it, it, you do immediately taste, like, a general sense of strongness and that if you do have a few of these, it will start to have an effect on you. Because it is relatively strong, but it also feels like one that you can just feel very palatable with and you can just slog down a bit. And as a result, I would feel it is probably quite appropriate to have at either house parties or with a really nice meal preferably like something nice and german like a currywurst or a oh god what else or just a really nice bratwurst with fried onions actually that'd probably be quite good so yeah i uh, i really like this it's definitely better than the palanch palana munch and hell um, I'm trying to think if it is slightly better than Erdinger Weissbier, because that's probably the closest thing you can compare this to. And I think it is probably, realistically speaking, because Erdinger Weissbier is really nice, and it's got all the characteristics you'd expect of a southern German wheat beer, but I feel like this is slightly superior because it has more interesting and more varied flavour, and there's also the fact that the texture is slightly smoother and it's slightly more palatable and easier to swallow down, so... I feel like I would probably recommend this slightly more. Um, I'm just struggling. The main thing I'm, I am struggling with is the numeric rating. Because, I, I don't know. Hang on. Because I feel like if you're not in the mood, it could go down as low as like a 7.5. But... If you are in the mood, it could probably go as high as an 8.25. I think, th yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with an 8.25 because it's a very general, broadly specific, like just palatable general wheat beer that I think a lot of people could enjoy, and it will probably go well in quite a lot of different situations if you serve it chilled with maybe some nice spicy food or just having it on its own during warm weather i think it's just a beer for most if not all occasions so yeah give it a look in i would recommend this i got this for i think 295 from the wine barrel on western road in hove so check that out if you're interested and yeah i would recommend this 8.25 out of 10 overall for the taste and i'd say just a general wheat beer flavor so check that out if you guys are interested as always though, have fun with whatever you're doing. If you liked my video, leave a like, share and subscribe. If you want to check out any of my other online activities, I'll leave the links to my social medias and other YouTube channels in the video description below. And if you have any suggestions for future episodes of Ted's Boo Cellar, leave them in the comments section below. And yes, have fun, stay safe with whatever you're doing, wash your hands, take a mask out with you when you go to the shops. Uh, take care of your family, drink responsibly, know your limits, and I'll see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Booze Cellar. I'll feed us in.